President Muhammad Buhari calls for reform of the judicial system and the AFDB re-elects Akiumi Adeshina. This is Plus Politics and I am Osao Gye Ogbonwan. President Muhammad Buhari has called for an urgent reform of the judicial system with the aim of quickening the slow pace of trials in the courts. He said this through the Vice President Yemi Simbajo, who represented him at the 60th Annual General Conference of the Nigerian Bar Association. The President also frowned at the multiple and conflicting orders of courts. Joining us to discuss this is Libro Soshoma and Chijo Keagbo, both legal practitioners. Welcome, uh, Barista Agbo. Thank you, Madam Lutz. And also, uh, good evening to uh, Libra Soshoma. Pleasure. Thank you. I'm going to start with um, uh, Mr. Agbo. I want to kick off with you. President Muhammad Bari charged operators of the legal system to take steps uh, towards changing the narrative with regards to the slow pay, uh, pace of the judicial system or justice delivery system. What would you say are the biggest causes of slow delivery of justice in Nigeria? Thank you again. Um, the Nigerian judiciary uh, operates um, with a lot of constraints. Constraints of uh, manpower, constraints of uh, facilities, constraints of uh, various times. Let's take uh, the court system, for instance. If you visit some of our courts, the facilities are not adequate. At this age and time, our high court judges still take you know, evidence in long hand. Even in the magistrate court, it's the same thing. Sometimes power outages and so on. You know, there are quite a lot of problems. Then the court may come and be able and be willing to take on the matter. And for instance, an accused person you will not be brought from the correctional center. So that also is a problem. They too have logistic problems of meeting with the logistics of moving uh, suspects from their centers to the court. It can also stall process. Again, uh, some of our colleagues too, they have one reason or the other not to want a matter to go on. So the problems are quite many. And most importantly, the recruitment process of judicial officers must be depoliticized. There is so much involvement of the executive in this whole process. And I think it goes to impact on the outcome of the judicial system. You know, because sometimes when you appoint people, you will not expect them to always uh, be bold enough to stand the test. So these are things. Then with respect to issues of conflicting judgments, you can see a of it. Our judges need to be backed up with research assistance. Who can always bring to their attention decisions of courts of coordinate jurisdiction or courts taken even by the Supreme Court, the highest court in the land, with respect to a matter that appears to them on similar facts and similar evidence, so that there will not be conflicting reports. It's even more embarrassing when, for instance, in the course of appeal, you get on the same issue, the same subject matter, you get conflicting judgments from various divisions of the court. It does not open well to our system. Then the president's talk, I hope he, he works his talk, because the executive must from the judiciary to be able to deliver. You know, it's not enough to say that uh, you want matters, for instance, from court to first instance, to get to the Supreme Court and be concluded within 15 months. Is that all order? Do we have the facilities to meet that? I think we are very far from achieving right. that. Yes. Okay, I'm going to go to uh, Libra Soshoma now, and I'm going to ask about um, um, you know, a similar question, you know, but I want to know if the, the challenge that you see is strictly with the judicial system or is it intertwined with other institutions of government, other government agencies that also contribute to this slow pace of um, justice delivery in Nigeria? Um, I think um, 
us is um, is a problem of uh, it's a systemic problem, really. And then um, sometimes I I laugh when I hear people who ordinarily should be the one correcting this systemic problem, you know, to also be complaining about the problem. This is not the first time the president is complaining about um, the judiciary being his headache. At every time that the president is a, 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 um, um, invited to the MBA, yeah. his um, address is always about the judiciary being a headache. And then I had expected that, yes, you know that this is your headache. What are the um, analgesic that you are taking to ameliorate the problems? You know, rather than just come and complain, you know, and then the, to the best of my knowledge, the Chief Justice just of the Federation is appointed, you know, to a large extent by Mr. President. We knew how this one was appointed. You know, what was the marching order? What was, you know, the fundamentals? Yeah. We all know that even the introduction of the Administration of Criminal Justice Act to fast track the dispensation of criminal justice in Nigeria is bogged down by lack of the infrastructure to enhance the, the, the applicability of that act. Take for example, now you have so many matters but fewer hands. If you read um, Fatai Eshaw, um, just uh, CJN of Blessed Memory, his, uh, his book, Cases, Places and Faces. He talked about the days when a judge will start a matter on Monday and by Friday he has delivered judgment because the cases were fewer and the hands were more. Now you have more cases, including both frivolous and non-frivolous ones, and fewer hands still handling the same number of cases. And then coupled with the fact that you now have time-bound cases, electoral matters, and it is the same judges that are going to handle those time-bound cases. So the other cases will suffer. And then lastly, you also now have the NJC that is not ready to weigh the big stick, where judges are giving conflicting orders. I expected that the NJC should have you know, a department to review some of these orders and some of these um, judgment that were given by judges. But the NJC is almost like a lame dog doing yeah. anything, doing nothing. And so these are some of the, the bottlenecks that you know, is inhibiting this quick dispensation of justice in Nigeria. Let me give you an example. Not too long ago, the Chief Justice of the Federation said that for the Supreme Court, for ordinary matters, there are no available dates apart from 2022, 2023. And it is that bad. In Lagos State, for example, you have about 70-something uh, courts to cater for almost the one million cases that are going to come into those courts. And of all of those 70-something courts, you have just two chambers of the Court of Appeal to take care of all those cases that will come from, of the appeals that will come from, you know, those... Um, those um, courts and then all of the close to 30 court of appeals all scattered all over the federation appeal lies to the supreme court and you have about three chambers or so yeah and and so with such a structure it's, it's if you like make difficult. laws yeah there is no way you are going to have you know a faster and speedy dispensation of justice and that was why if you listen to Festus Kiamu Lenin senior advocate during his ministerial screening he said that there are matters that ought not to go to the federal supreme court that we should have regional supreme courts that can and quickly yes yeah. that jurisdiction okay. of certain matters should terminate okay. at uh, those regional supreme court uh, uh, and so uh, it is time we begin to look at some of these processes and not just complain if the president is complaining what do you expect me a, a common lawyer to do. It's, it's a lot. I, I want to go back to uh, Barista Agbo. I, I want to know um, your thoughts on, I, th I, th I think this is something that is, um, you know, that bothers, you know, Nigerians and the masses a lot. There are numerous cases of people who are arrested and charged Hello. with, with uh, non-violent crimes. They are granted bail and maybe it's on, sometimes, unfortunately, end up spending months in jail for Hello. failure. Uh, can you hear us clearly, sir? Uh, Chidro Kagbo, can you hear us?
All right. Um, if, uh, we think we're going to have to reconnect with uh, him. I'm going to go back to Lee Ross. There's, uh, there's um, cases of uh, people who have spent um, months, maybe even years in jail, um, people who are arrested for nonviolent crimes who eventually end up you know, behind bars for years um, without any, you know, maybe unfortunately couldn't afford to you know, sort out their bail conditions. Do How you? do we have a system that can stop these at occurrences? Some, at some point, you know, there were times when we set up mobile courts, some of these courts who sit even in the premises of the correctional centers where some minor offenses would, you know, be heard by magistrates and there and then, um, you know, appropriate sanctions meted out. Even Lagos State tried what they call, um, um, uh, what do you call it now? They had um, a system where, you know, for minor offenses, you could serve um, punishments like, um, you know, maybe two weeks or one month of hard labor, you know, having to sweep streets, yeah. you know, with a, a, a vest, you know, to show that you're actually convicted and you're serving, you know, um, punishment. But thanks to corruption in the system, that system also had been abused where people, you know, by people who are supposed to oversee it because there are no consequences for action here. Where some people are convicted, they are sentenced to hard labor, you know, all they need to do is to settle the people in charge and then they go back home. And, and then you have a system also where we do not have records. Records, appropriate records are not kept. How do you now, without necessarily having to go to the high court, assess, you know, information on, you know, whether somebody is convicted or not? Records. If you commit an offense, for example, in a papa, you are booked as a first offender, and then you go to a Lakuko, or you go to somewhere in, in Igondo, or you go to Mowe to commit that same offense. You know, if you are not shown on television, you are still booked as first offender. You know, this is, these are some of the problems. And so you find out that the rich man that has money is able to hire lawyers that will slow down the dispensation of justice. And because there are no appropriate sanctions for that lawyer also, Iboris lawyer is in jail, or went to jail with him for delaying the course of justice. When you see that a matter is, you know, from the evidence gathered, it is obvious that a crime has been committed. As a lawyer, you take up such a matter and you want to delay. The appropriate body will also sanction you. Yeah. And you might go in for that. You might even lost, lost your certificate. But here, all of these things are not in place. And so, because of the hunger, every lawyer will take up any matter, even though you know that patently, that that matter, you know, your, your, your uh, what do you call it, client, you know, committed the offense, provided he's paying much, you put all kinds of spanner in the wheel, and then the system accommodates you. There are no, you are not sanctioned because you are a lawyer. And, and in the, at the end of the day, that matter will grind on. And so, because you have such precedent, there are people who cannot afford lawyers also. They just rot in correctional centers. And so that's why for me, when, even when the name was changed from prisons to correctional center, it's not in the name. It is in the attitude, in the facility that you put in place that will ensure that, if you like, call it prison. But if the facilities are there to actually correct and rehabilitate, you know, anybody that goes in there and comes out will be properly rehabilitated. But when the facilities are not there, just like also the facilities in the judiciary also are not there. Go to some state, you see some magistrate, you, you wouldn't even want to be one. You know? So it is that bad. Oshiba Anjo did try it when he was in Lagos as an attorney general. He was very bad in Lagos. It used to be very bad. But what he did, two instructive, two instructive steps he took. The first was to ensure that the sector was enhanced their remuneration, the cost of living was, were enhanced. And then they waded out the corrupt ones. Yeah. And they stood by their guns. And then the second thing they did was to introduce, you know, what you call um, collaboration, private sector collaboration between, you know, they introduced what, now call, what we now know as, known as the multi-door courts house, where, you know, you can take your matters to arbitration. In collaboration with the state judiciary and judgment at the end of the day, would be obtained by negotiation. So cases that were ordinarily supposed to go to the regular court 
we are given an opportunity where a betrayer, you can sit out as an arbitrator. Once you are certified as a betrayer, you sit as an arbitrator, even though you are a lawyer in a matter, and at the end of the day, you, are, you help to resolve the matter. The matter is taken before a judge, who, and all you need to now do as lawyers is to adopt the resolution reached, and boom, it becomes the judgment of the court. So this way weighs also that they ensure that cases that would have taken years to handle, we are dealt with. So in the same vein, there is need. You see some of the state government also, you know, introducing some of those, you know, laws in their statute book. But for criminal matters, you cannot, for obvious reasons, take those ones to arbitration. Let me, let me quickly ask about um, the president talking about 12 to 15 months. Um, he is commander in chief. Um, of course, like you also said, you know, he appointed the CJN, you know, based on how, you know, that played out. What would you suggest that the president or the executive should be able to put in place immediately? Because why I'm saying this is because it's not the first time that we're hearing these type of statements. Yeah, exactly. um, last year also, President Mahmoud Dubari made a similar statement. Yeah. Um, but there doesn't seem to be any actual action taken. Because um, it's like the president's, you know, like to hear himself talk when these issues are concerned. I, I do not want, I want to see less of, you know, talk, but actions. I had expected, look at the existing laws. Where can you come in? What is the government doing? Are they sponsoring a, an executive bill to ensure there is speed, a speedy dispensation of justice? Are they also taking steps to expand the number of the existing courts that we have? Are they amending the constitution to accommodate regional Supreme Courts so that all of these matters, even including frivolous ones, will not have to end up at the Supreme Court? There are some cases, even at the High Court, that takes eight years, you know, on and off. And, and so, one would have expected that, oh, I want to hear in the news that the government has taken steps. They've taken steps, they've introduced bills, they are going to, they are appointing new judges. So, so this is not a, a message that should be going to the judiciary? No, this is, should be a collaboration between the executive and the judiciary on how best they can ensure that the windmill of justice here grind faster. Because when we do all of these things and then we compensate ourselves by saying the windmill of justice grinds slowly but surely. But we forget that justice delayed is justice denied. You know, you must be able to marry the two together for you to actually sit down and say, look, uh, justice here is, is very slow. And so now it's like you are a military commander, you are giving a marching order to a court martial to a, a, a tribunal. It doesn't work that way. And then also you have lawyers who intentionally take matters to court that ordinarily ought not to be in court. Let me give you an instance. The matter, the APC crisis. Yeah. At some point, a court in Abuja gave one judgment today. A federal high court in uh, Kano gave another judgment in the same matter, in the same set of facts. And then you now begin to ask yourself, being a, a matter that happened in Iyamu, at least they said that um, the, what do you call it, um, the party uh, ward chair, uh, uh, chairman and his members suspended the national chairman, because he must be suspended from the world. What is the jurisdiction of the FCT High Court? This is not the Federal High Court now. In such a matter. You know, I expected that immediately it happened. The NJC should look at, and then, that's why also we do not need a, an NJC that sits on ad hoc basis. You have a lot of retired justices that are not doing anything. They are consulting. Why don't you incorporate them into the NJC to ensure that they are still, they are still very busy? So immediately such steps, uh, such happen, the instrumentality of the NJC is activated to ensure that, you know, such a scenario is studied and then any judge that gives such order will immediately be summoned to come explain. By so doing, because ours is a peculiar society, some people will say, oh no, judges will not dispense justice without fear or favor. But in situations where justice is, judges are dispensing justice and it seems that those justice, that justice is bought, that is also not dispensing of justice without fear or favor. So there's need for a body to timelessly look at those issues. So when you know that the big hammer, NJC is going to weigh the big stick, yeah. you're not going to, no matter the inducement, 
you are certainly going to ensure that, you know, you look over your shoulders and say, look, I know these other we people are watching. That was why Kyle assured GSC, of blessed memory, this yeah. the way we were going, before we know it, we'll create, create billionaire judges because when judges were going to election petition tribunal and you hear allegations of bribery, inducement, and okay. the kind of conflicting judgment that were coming there from, and that was why the Supreme Court said, okay, now, all governorship matters, let them terminate at the Supreme Court. But some people also felt because Supreme Court wanted a, a share of the cherry. And I'm, I'm just going to bring that up. We have about a minute left to wrap up this segment so we can move into other things. I was just going to bring that up. Um, how do you feel that corruption can also be stamped out? Because I've heard people say, even in cases where there were internet fraud stars, you know, were arrested outside Nigeria, were sent to jail. I've heard people say, oh, you know, they probably should have just run to Nigeria. They, they wouldn't have gone to jail. Yeah. So how do you, in one minute, please, first, how do you stamp out corruption? First and foremost, we should understand that prosecution starts from investigation. You cannot strengthen the criminal dispensation of justice without strengthening your police system. Over there, before the police makes arrests, they would have investigated to the end. Yeah. And so the day you are caught, be sure that you are going to court the next day. But here, the police arrests on allegation even before investigating. And, and that's the difference. You first need to reform that. All right. And then once you reform that, you now be faced the judiciary so that once the matter gets to court, the, you would have crossed your T's and dots your eyes at it to be so obvious that the accused will have no other option but to say, I actually did this. Okay. And then he will be pleading for mercy. But when you have not even alleged anything, you have not even investigated anything against him, he gets that it is that time you are fishing for evidence. It is easier for him to compromise you and then find his way out. All right. Um, thank you very much for staying with us. We'll take a short break, and when we return, um, Kiwumi Adishina to preside once again over the AFDB for another tenure. We'll be right back.